A few people have asked me to make a video regarding backstops when shooting. This isn't an easy subject to cover because it depends on whether you're shooting a sub 12 foot pound air rifle, a shotgun or an FAC rifle. And by FAC for, for say our, our American friends, I mean a powder burning rifle or a air gun producing more than 12 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. So let's break it down. First of all, we have air rifles. A UK legal 12 foot pound air rifle in 22 caliber will fire a 16 grain projectile at around 580 feet per second maximum. Usually, to be honest, a little bit less than that. For this reason, it's generally considered to be reasonably safe to shoot it up in the air. But even a 12 foot pound air rifle can go a considerable distance. If you look at Giles Barry's video on air gun gear where he shot a reactive target at over 200 yards, you'll see the kinds of distances that you'll need to be aware of. Sure, in all likelihood the falling pallet is more, more likely to annoy than seriously injure a passerby or a sheep, but it's still something to apply common sense to. Remember, if someone calls the police it is unlikely you'll get any sympathy from them, especially if you've broken somebody's window. Secondly, we have shotguns. Assuming you're using birdshot, it's not only safe to shoot it up in the air, but it's preferable. If shot at a 45 degree angle with the wind behind it, number six birdshot will travel around 300 yards before it comes back to earth with, with an average cartridge. But when it does, short of hitting someone in the eye, it's pretty harmless. This is why the general rule on a pheasant shoot is if you can see sky, shoot. If you can't, don't. But if that shot lands on someone's house or they call the police, like with an air rifle, you will not get any sympathy and may lose your license. That said, it's perfectly safe to shoot into the ground with a shotgun if you're, say, shooting rabbits, etc. But in those circumstances, you need to apply the same rules as a rifle. You need to know where that shot is going to go because at closer ranges, that shot can cause some serious damage. So don't shoot a shotgun through a hedge or over the top of a hedge unless you know for a fact that it's safe. And usually, you don't know it's for, for a fact that it's safe. At this point, I'm, just, I'm afraid I'm going to have to tell you again just to use some common sense, as it's your call. Just remember, it's your license um, that you risk if you do anything stupid. And also, bear in mind, if you're out with a shotgun and you're shooting at the ground, then if you've got other people with you, that exponentially increases the, the danger. Some people have often asked me when I go ferreting why I don't shoot the rabbits as they bolt rather than use purse nets. And the reason is, although that does sound like a lot of fun, I've never really kind of got round to that because it's generally considered to be quite dangerous. Because when someone's got a shotgun and they get excited and they see something bolt out of the hedge, they have a tendency to sort of instinctively shoot. As where with a rifle, you tend to be a bit more considered when you pull the trigger. If you are shooting instinctively like that at the ground and you've got other people with you, the chances of an injury you know, is quite high. So again, use your common sense. Now let's move on to the main point of this video, FAC rifles. Every single shot that you take needs to go into the ground and you need to know where that's going to be. Never shoot towards the brow of a hill. If that bullet makes it over, it may go hundreds of yards and kill or maim someone. Obviously never shoot into the air, even with a rimfire. A 2-2 long rifle shot at 45 degrees could travel for a thousand yards and when it hits the ground it will still have enough energy to kill someone. In fact if you look at the video made by Iraq uh, war veteran 8888 uh, about how far a 2, -two will kill, he used the military standard of the half inch pine board and he's, he decided if it could penetrate up that pine board it's deadly. And, you know, he got out to well over 400 yards. And beyond that, I think he was just having trouble being able to connect with the piece of wood. But, frankly, any distance you can hit something with a 2-2 is potentially deadly. So treat it as any other centrefire rifle. In fact, with the police, the uh, even though many police forces don't consider shooting a 2 2 rimfire at game to be reasonable experience for then shooting a centre fire. The Home Office disagrees because it's exactly the same principle. 
often you'll see in the news in Arab countries, men shooting their AK-47s into the air in celebration at a wedding or some other celebration. Those rounds could come down in someone's garden, a city high street, anywhere, and kill whoever it hits. In fact, I've heard news reports in places like Jordan where it's considered a serious problem. Don't be that guy. Similarly, I've seen Americans shooting squirrels out of trees with too, too long with a too too long rifle, and they think it's safe because they're out in the wilderness. Well, you're there, aren't you? So what makes you think that some other guy isn't doing exactly the same thing and taking exactly the same risks shooting up in the air as you are? He could get hit by you and you could get hit by him. Again, don't be that guy. You know, it, it, if you shoot someone, then that is potentially going to end you in prison. That's how serious it is. Now, obviously, in the UK, this is something to be especially mindful of, as pretty much anywhere you shoot, you'll be near some sort of civilization, unless you're out of the in the middle of nowhere in Wales or Scotland. But for most people, you're 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 never going to be much more than five hundred yards away from something that you don't want to shoot by accident. And in the region I live, it's very flat, which creates a, an additional problem. If you're shooting downhill and there's lots of land for that bullet to go into. Just make sure you can see where that will be. The same goes for a big pile of earth, etc. behind your quarry. But what, what if it's flat? Well, use your common sense. There is a reason that you rarely see a deer stalker use a bipod when shooting a deer, and that 99% of the time they'll be using shooting sticks. It's because they need to ensure the muzzle of their rifle is above the kill zone for their target. If you shot a deer on flat ground from the prone position with a bipod, you'd be shooting upwards. Effectively, you'll be shooting up into the air. Sticks mean that the angle is going to be going downwards, so you know that the bullet is going to go into the ground as it passes through the animal's body. Then it's just a question of having enough open ground behind the animal to absorb that bullet. This is why when you see me shooting with a bipod on flat ground for rabbits or foxes, I extend the legs on the bipod. This way I know the muzzle is above the kill zone. Now, it's just a question of allowing enough distance to make sure that the bullet goes safely into the ground. You need to be able to see where that bullet is going to go. There's no point thinking, oh, there's a hedge, I think it's all right. No, you need to make sure that there's enough ground. Now is the subject of ricochets. I think there's actually a lot of exaggeration of how much of a problem this is. But at the same time, that isn't a bad thing because it's something to be mindful of. Don't shoot at a target where... where the backdrop will be something like concrete or rocks. Or maybe just grass where you know the ground is very hard and rocky because it might ricochet. In fact, it's more likely to ricochet with a lower-powered cartridge like a 2 2 long rifle. That said, the level of energy left in the bullet after it has bounced off something is hugely exaggerated by most people. Most of the power will be dumped upon the initial impact, especially if it has passed through an animal. But use your common sense. It's better to be safe than sorry. And... As I said, I don't want to over-egg um, my thoughts on this being exaggerated, because it is exaggerated. You know, I've been shot by ricochets pl you know, plenty of times, you know, and you'll see people being shot, people shooting steel with handguns in America, and they're shooting at like 10 yards, and the bullet comes back and hits them in the face, and they don't die. They'll just have a horrible bruise, and obviously if it hit them in the eye, it would be very serious. And of course, this is made worse if you're shooting jacketed ammo and stuff from a rifle where you might leave a, a, a large distance. But the fact is, compared to shooting a bullet in the air, if you shoot like a 243 rifle at 45 degrees, it's probably going to go for miles and kill someone when it hits the ground. If you shoot at something 50 yards away with a 243 and it ricochets, Vegas odds, it's not going to go very far. And, where, and that's because it's going to have lost the vast majority of its energy. But like with a shotgun or with the air rifle, you don't want to annoy or inconvenience someone. This is a bit like the rule where you need to always be within 50 feet of a highway. Uh, sorry, beyond 50 feet of a highway when you're shooting. And the, the law says that because basically you've got to not annoy anyone. It's not about shooting them or anything. It's just about annoying them. And in fact, there is a grey area there because if you are within those that 50 feet, as long as you don't annoy or inconvenience anyone, technically you're not breaking the law. But the law 
does consider you annoying someone as to be enough for you to be in serious trouble. So I hope that kind of covers it. As I said, this wasn't an easy video to make, but any questions, and if there's anything you think I've missed, put them in the comments. <laughs>